this is captain chaudhary i will be speaking about the moment of inertia and the applications of moment of inertia today what is moment of inertia if i ask you what is moment of inertia naturally you would start thinking like what what is moment of inertia if i ask you mass probably it is even difficult to define the mass i might say that my mass is 71 kg we are using this physical quantity mass in a day to day life we are purchasing vegetables we are purchasing things and if i want to lift something uh, i must know what is the mass i am lifting and so on the mass if i want to move an object for example if i want to push or if i want to pull an object i must try and find out at least two things like what is the mass what is the mass of the object i want to move and what is the strength i have whether i can move the mass or not so so if i am strong enough i will be able to move the mass i will be able to cause what is called linear motion so what is the value of mass for linear motion the similar is the relevance of moment of inertia for rotatory motion so when uh, we are talking about some rotatory motion it is not only the mass that is important it is also important as to where the axis is for example if there is a door right i want to open the door and there is an axis over here and suppose there is a wheel which i want to turn to open the door right some amount of effort will be taken to open the door whereas if there is a door of same size same mass etc but the axis is over here i would prefer opening the door this way rather than this way although the mass might be same the size might be same of the two doors but i find this one much easier just for information if it is a rectangular door like this the effort taken to open this particular door is four times so that will give you an idea of moment of inertia if i want to move something i want to uh, have an idea what is the mass of the object if i want to turn something in addition to the mass i also want to know what is the moment of inertia of the plane that i want to turn about the axis so moment of inertia of this rectangular plane about this axis is minimum because this particular axis is passing through the geometric centroid of the plane whereas if i want to turn the door about any other axis other than the centroid axis i will exert extra i will have to apply an extra effort at the moment as far as the competency subjects are concerned moment of inertia has three applications number 1 to find out bm transverse or bm longitudinal number 2 to find the center of pressure and number 3 to find out what is the free surface moment or what is the free surface effect caused by a free surface right so uh, we trying to understand what is moment of inertia moment of inertia can also be understood in uh, the concept of balanced rudder versus unbalanced rudder so suppose you have this is the stern part of the ship if you have the rudder like this this would be called as unbalanced rudder whereas if you have the axis passing through like this this could be semi balanced or a balanced rudder the difference is in case i want to apply uh, an effort over here the effort taken to turn a balanced rudder would be 1/4 of the effort which is taken to uh, turn the unbalanced rudder moment of inertia right i hope we have got some uh, feel some understanding like mass like mass must be something like this i am weighing so much so my mass is so much similarly the moment of inertia is associated with a rotatory moment once again i will repeat the same thing what is mass to a linear motion is the moment of inertia to a rotatory motion now let's try and find out what are the different uh, formulae associated with the moment of inertia of well defined shapes so those well defined shapes are say first of all rectangular shape length and breadth let us say now this is the axis passing through the centroid right we are visualizing the turning or spinning of this plane about this axis 
Now the moment of inertia is L into BQ upon 12. So along the axis the dimension is L, so L to the power 1. Perpendicular to the axis the dimension is B, so B cube I divide by 12. Which means that if we have a rectangle like this and the axis is axis is passing like this through the centroid this is b and this is l the formula is going to be dl cube upon 12 so this is for the rectangle triangle if this is base and this is height right this is the centroid of the triangle as you know is one third from the base the position of centroid and if you think of an axis which is parallel to the base passing through the centroid the moment of inertia about this axis is bh cube upon 36. If you have a circular plane, right, this is the diameter and if you want to know what is the moment of inertia of the circular plane about the diameter which naturally is passing through the centroid is pi d raised to 4 upon 64. The unit in all the cases is meter raised to 4. Meter raised to 4. As I told you before also, the moment of inertia is minimum about the axis passing through the centroid. But if I want to find out the moment of inertia about any other axis, say for example, I know the moment of inertia about this axis is LB cube upon 12. If I want to find out what is the moment of inertia about this axis, which is parallel to the axis passing through the centroid with a distance between them as say for example d then the moment of inertia about this axis will be moment of inertia about centroid plus the area of the entire plane multiplied by d square where d is the distance between the two parallel axes. So this is called theorem of parallel axis. Theorem of parallel axis means if I know the moment of inertia about the axis passing through the centroid, I can find out the moment of inertia about any other axis which is parallel to the axis passing through the centroid. And that axis might be in the air. It might be remotely placed, say at a distance of d1. I can find out moment of inertia about an axis which is outside the plane also. So in the similar way, if I know the moment of inertia about the centroid of a triangle, right, the axis is parallel to the base, I can also find out the moment of inertia about the base, I can find out the moment of inertia about the apex and so on, right. You will find that the moment of inertia about any axis that is outside or away from the centroid axis is more than the moment of inertia about the centroid axis. So that's why whenever we want to find out moment of inertia about any other axis other than the centroid axis, we have to add a d square. The reverse is also true. If I know the moment of inertia about a remote axis, then I can find out the moment of inertia about a parallel axis passing through the centroid. But in that case, I will have to do minus a d square. So the golden rule is if I know the moment of inertia about the centroid axis to find out moment of inertia about any other axis we do plus AD square operation and from a remote axis if I want to come down to the centroid axis I will have to do minus AD square operation. In the game of parallel axis you cannot bypass the axis which is passing through the centroid. You cannot say that I know moment of inertia about this axis, I will be able to find out moment of inertia about this axis without the knowledge of the axis at the centroid. From this axis, if you want to find out what is the moment of inertia of this axis, then first from this moment of inertia, I will have to do minus AD square and come down to this axis. Once I know the moment of inertia about the centroid axis, from there sky is the limit. I can find out moment of inertia about any other axis, but you cannot bypass the centroid axis. So please remember for your calculations, don't make this mistake, right? You, whenever you are using theorem of parallel axis, either you will have to apply plus AD square or you will have to apply minus AD square. You cannot bypass the moment of inertia about the centroid. Please remember that. 
Now I would like to prove to you mathematically uh, as to what is the difference between the balanced rudder and unbalanced rudder. We are talking about a rudder where the axis is over here and the same size, same weight, same uh, dimensions rudder where the axis is passing through the center, geometric centroid. Uh, let us say this is 3 meters, this is 2 meters. So moment of inertia about this axis which is passing through the centroid will be 3 into 2 cube upon 12. That is 2 meter raised to 4. Now this distance is 1 meter. Okay, If I want to find out the moment of inertia about a remote axis, I will have to add AD square to the 2 meters. Right. So what is the moment of inertia about this axis? Moment of inertia about the centroid axis plus AD square. What is the area? Area is 6. What is the distance? 1. So 6 into 1 square. So that becomes 8. So you've seen the moment of inertia about the centroid axis is 2 meter raised to 4. And moment of inertia about the edge axis is 8 meter raised to 4. Nearly 4 times. Actually 4 times. So uh, this way we can find out the moment of inertia about a remote axis. Let's say this is a triangle. This is uh, say for example 6 and let the height be 4. The moment of inertia about the centroid axis parallel to the base will be bh cube upon 36. So that is 6 into 4 cube upon 36. 64 upon 6. 64 divided by 6 is 10.67 meter raised to 4. So normally in your shipboard calculations when it is a linear unit for example meter you should try and take three digits of decimal I tell the students. For the area you can take two digits of decimal. For moment of inertia you don't have to actually take any digit after the decimal. So uh, round it off it is about 11 meter raised to 4. That is the moment of inertia about the axis passing through the centroid and parallel to the base. If I want to find out, if I want to find out what is the moment of inertia about the base, then it would be 10.67 plus AD square. What is the area? Area is 12 because half base into height. And what is the distance? Distance uh, between the axis and the base should be one third of the four. So four by three whole square. So 4 by 3 is 1.333 square, 1.333 uh, square multiplied by 12 equal to plus 10.67. That makes it 31.99 approximately equal to 32 meter raised to 4. So this is how we can use the theorem of parallel axis but I will repeat once again my statement that whenever you are using theorem of parallel axis you cannot bypass the moment of inertia about the axis passing through the centroid. You cannot bypass the centroid.